Welcome to Redefining Medicine, an intimate and personalized program that illustrates a different side of the practice of medicine. Our in-depth conversations will focus on the physicians and practitioners who are redefining medicine through their integrative, functional, and holistic approach to health and well-being. We are pleased to have Dr. Erin Amato, an adult, child, and adolescent psychiatrist based in Billings, Montana. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me. What first attracted you to psychiatry? Um, I find the brain to be fascinating, and I really like the relationships that I can build with people in the psychiatric field. Mm -hmm. When did you realize uh, that you wanted to take a more integrative approach with your practice? You know, I didn't even know the word integrative necessarily or functional until um, about five years ago, um, I made some changes in my practice really after losing my first patient to suicide. And it made me really reevaluate the approach I was taking with people and made me think very deeply about the other people I was working with who had treatment resistant conditions and weren't making progress. So, um, so I started venturing into uh, other treatments like TMS and IV ketamine therapy. And during the course of doing those things, I found A4M. And uh, I first found A4M because my parents had located a practitioner who was affiliated with the organization, and that's what sp sparked my curiosity. So uh, maybe expound a little bit on uh, TMS and the other? Sure, so TMS stands for transcranial magnetic stimulation. And it's an FDA cleared treatment for uh, primarily treatment resistant depression and it works by uh, stimulating an area of the brain that's been identified as being slowed or sluggish when people are suffering from depression and it's a really nice alternative for people who have already been down the route of trying multiple medications that either haven't um, made a significant impact in their condition or if they've had side effects to traditional antidepressants. Right. How much of a role does um, diet and nutrition play in your practice now? Uh, that's something that's really evolved over the last few years, and I certainly have more conversations with my patients about the importance of diet and exercise, um, as well as the importance of sleep and stress management. And uh, I find that I'm doing a lot of education to try to emphasize to my patients why that's important because many people coming through the door to see a psychiatrist have the expectation of walking out with a prescription to fix what's going on with them. So there's a lot of work that has to be done to explain that there are many other reasons why they're not feeling well and many other paths to take to um, feeling well again. Yeah. And, and all the side effects that can be associated with prescription medication, um, they, they would be well served to consider some of the alternatives, right? Absolutely, right. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you're an advanced fellow. Mm -hmm. okay. Tell us a little bit about when you found uh, A4M and, and that journey. So um, I attended my first A4M um, annual meeting here in Las Vegas three years ago. And uh, wow, that was such an eye-opening experience. Um, I was so impressed with all the happy doctors that I saw, people who seemed really excited about the practice of medicine. And uh, one of the big questions I had as, as I was at that first meeting was, where are the psychiatrists? We should be here. And um, it really got me thinking about psychiatry, um, not just from the anti-aging perspective of A4M, but taking that back through the, the whole life cycle of, of what I see in psychiatry because I'm also trained as a child psychiatrist. So just applying that integrative lens to, um, you know, from birth until uh, the grave and really thinking about how we need to be making interventions so much earlier in order to try to prevent some of the conditions we're dealing with in psychiatry. Right. So as a psychiatrist, do you see um, a lot of patients with you know, uh, ADHD and, and disorders such as that? Um, yes, especially in the pediatric population. So significant numbers of ADHD, uh, autism spectrum disorder, mood disorders, including depression and bipolar disorder, 
and anxiety disorders, OCD. Those are very commonly the things that I'm seeing. And along with those, I'm hearing complaints of insomnia, brain fog, fatigue, so many of the things that other integrative uh, practitioners are also treating. Mm -hmm. Having learned what you've learned uh, through the fellowship, certainly, uh, how much do you feel uh, environmental toxins play a role in some of the uh, issues that your patients are presenting with? I, I think they play a significant role. And even looking back to prenatal exposure, some of the studies that have looked at cord blood of infants and seeing that uh, the cord blood contains somewhere around 280 uh, toxins, I, I mean, it really makes you pause and think about, okay, if we're seeing ADHD or autism in a four-year-old or an eight-year-old child, where did this process really start? Mm -hmm. So uh, then do you uh, employ uh, detoxification protocols in your practice? At this point, my approach has been more of, um, again, doing education about diet and removing certain things from the diet, um, just things that we all encounter in our practices with um, the high levels of sugar intake and processed foods. And, and I think that's my biggest target, my biggest battle right now that I'm, that I'm working with with a lot of my patients is is diet and just avoidance of um, many of the toxins. Mm -hmm. So your, your practice is in Billings, Montana? Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about your work with uh, the Yellowstone Boys and Girls Ranch and how did you first start working with groups like these? So I've been working with the Yellowstone Boys and Girls Ranch for about nine years. And uh, they have a couple of different service arms in terms of level of care. and. Uh, most of my involvement has been with their psychiatric residential treatment facility. So uh, that's a program that serves youth, both boys and girls, um, ages about 10 to 18. And these are kids from multiple states that have severe uh, mental illness. So many of these kids have had multiple inpatient psychiatric hospitalizations. Um, many of them come from backgrounds where there's been in utero exposure to drugs or alcohol or significant neglect or trauma in early life. Um, so it's a, a really challenging group to work with. But rewarding, I would imagine? Absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. And are, are you able to um, see positive you know, uh, re results from the work that you're doing with them? We do see positive outcomes, yes. and. Um, and that is one arena where I would like to see more options for bringing an integrative approach. Um, one challenge is I have a, um, two private practices where I have a lot more control in terms of what I'm able to bring directly to patients. Um, whereas working within a system like the Yellowstone Boys and Girls Ranch, it takes more time to introduce those concepts and those therapies. Um, and then the challenge also becomes that um, once we are able to find some interventions that are working, especially if we're to try some of the um, dietary or lifestyle interventions, there would really be a need to educate families about how they would continue those interventions once the kids return home. Um, and that's so much um, of what child psychiatry is really about as it's more family psychiatry and really working with parents also in terms of that education and support. Mm -hmm. Do you work a lot with addiction? Um, not a lot, um, but, and, and I say that in terms of not necessarily in a form, formal treatment program, right. but um, even in the outpatient population, there are a lot of people who are self-medicating with um, alcohol and with food and with sugar. So, yeah, I deal with addiction even if it's not a more formal treatment program. Right, right. So you mentioned you have two practices. Mm -hmm. um, are they different from each other? They do. Um, I have one practice um, called Montana Psychiatry and Brain Health Center. Uh, that is a more traditional psychiatric practice um, where uh, there's another psychiatrist and uh, two nurse practitioners and two PAs. Um, and it is more focused in terms of the other uh, clinicians in the office um, towards a traditional approach. Um, and that's where um, I've been doing TMS and ketamine. And I opened a separate practice this year called the Center for Ideal Health, which is more focused on 
uh, the personalized lifestyle medicine um, therapies that I wanted to introduce to patients. And with that, the way that I've structured it is we're doing um, kind of all-inclusive wellness programs where we work with people um, for a concentrated period of time, kind of a blitzkrieg approach um, to really try to get people a jump start into some nutritional intervention, some um, supplementation, diagnostic testing um, to get them on that path to optimal health. And it's going well, the practices? It's going well and it's been a lot of fun. It's been um, what, one of the things that's been most satisfying is a lot of the initial patients who started working with us were patients that we've known from the psychiatric practice for many years. So these are patients that I've been treating for depression, anxiety, maybe bipolar 2 disorder, but they also had obesity, prediabetes, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, I mean the whole list of things. And to be able to make these interventions and see that their psychiatric symptoms are getting better, to see that they've been able to significantly reduce or come off of some of their medications, to stop their sleeping medications. I mean, it's, it's been such a win for me to see that and it's really, um, really encouraged me to keep going with this. Yeah. Yeah. Those sound like very interesting practices. Good luck with those. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, hopefully uh, if more psychiatrists uh, might see this uh, podcast and, and uh, realize that there's um, perhaps another thing that they can incorporate into their uh, patient care. So yes. thanks for taking the time to join us today. Thank you very much.